Well guys, this video is long overdue. I am going to talk about what I believe is the best kept secret to finished carpenters that I've personally ever come across. And amazingly, even though it is such an incredible tool to use, a lot of the best carpenters I know have not been able to make it work for them. So I'm hoping in this video I can tackle some of the problems with this little product inside this little plastic uh, container here. So whenever my good buddy Pete first told me about this product, I was really hesitant to give it a try and I ignored the advice for a long time. But then I finally tried this stuff out and it completely changed my workflow. As trim guys, to do a quality job, we have to have joinery, we have to use adhesives, we have to account for wood movement and things like that that might compromise the look of our job years to come. So we're always forced to use wood glue, regular PVA yellow glue such as this. Problem with this is it has its own set of issues. It requires dry time and clamping pressure and things like that. So whenever you introduce a different product into the equation such as this Hyper PUR adhesive, it completely changes our options as finished carpenters on what we can do and how quickly we can do it. So in this video, I'm gonna to try to tackle all the problems that I hear most commonly that guys have with this adhesive. I'm gonna take the approach as if I'm training an apprentice on what they need to know about this product to use it effectively. And we'll go into some of the applications that I personally use it for that have been game changing for me from a time and profitability standpoint. PUR adhesive has been used commercially in a wide, wide array of applications, but uh, most of those applications require expensive equipment, expensive <clears throat> guns that are larger with a higher upfront cost, and a lot of the commercial jobs, uh, you would use a really large cartridge of the PUR adhesive. So for us as trim carpenters and woodworkers, there aren't a lot of, actually there aren't hardly any options out there besides these basic guns that will heat your glue up. So first step in this process is going to be simply to insert your cartridge <clears throat> into the gun. You're going to use the trigger, inserting the gun back on sideways, and then you're just going to snap it in place. I've got it plugged in here. You see I've got a green light right here. The green means uh, that the cartridge is hot. However, whenever you put the gun on, you're going to see that green light turn red. Red means that your product needs to be heated up or that it is in heating mode. So this will take about 15 minutes to heat up. I like to give it about 15 to 30 minutes to make sure the glue is good and hot. One of the first things you'll notice whenever you're shopping for this product is that there are three different products available whenever you search for this adhesive. There are different three different set times typically used. You're gonna have 30, I believe 60, and 90 second set times. I personally always use the 30 second set time and don't have any experience with the other set times. However, in the research I have done, I believe that the longer set time products have a thicker viscosity, which is not ideal for the applications I use them for. With the 30 second actually being the thinnest viscosity, that's the one I go for. To be able to use this product, uh, product effectively, it's important to understand how it actually works. This is a hot melt polyurethane adhesive, not to be confused with your typical glue stick. There are two components to how this product sets up. One is the temperature, the other is air moisture. So you're gonna have to have it hot, that's one component in order for it to work. The second component is it actually interacts with moisture in the air or in the product you're applying it to. That causes it to cure. The initial cure strength is very strong, but it actually will continue to cure for the next 24 hours as it interacts with moisture in the air and in the product. So for maximum cure strength, it's gonna to continue to strengthen and um, you know that curve's gonna be really steep as it strengthens initially and flatten out the longer it goes. 
but a lot of times with my casing sets and things like that I'll do for windows, I'll just assemble everything all at once and leave them sit. Uh, and then the next day after they're all pre-assembled, they've had all night to cure and get that full bond strength, then I'll start nailing them to windows. So as you look at the specs on how this product is to be used, it'll tell you that it works best on water permeable substrates like wood and even plastic. It won't however work good for metal to metal applications. I tried to use it on iron balusters once and it was okay, but I could definitely tell that it wasn't bonding to the balusters the way an epoxy or something like that would. You're, good, you're gonna notice on these tubes of adhesive that the end has a green cap on it with this 30 second set time material. This is an extremely com important component because this is the barrier between that adhesive and the moisture in the air, which is gonna cause that glue to start to react. One of the most common problems that uh, a lot of guys have with this product is they heat the product up and allow it to sit out for too long. The moisture in the air then interacts with the glue in the end of the cartridge and it hardens, making the tube useless after that. So it's very important to Make sure as you're heating it up, just leave the cap on. Don't take the cap off until you're ready to start using it. And definitely uh, don't let the glue cool down without replacing that cap. The other thing you'll notice here, this is a tube of Hyper that I cut in half. The check valve is back here. That's what stops the glue from exiting the end of the tube. However, there's still plenty of room for glue up here. So the manufacturer recommends that before you cap the product and put it away, you always dispense of about an inch of liquid and then cap it immediately. And that's gonna make so this glue that's stuck in the end of the nozzle is not gonna have that moisture from the air already inside it, which is gonna cause it to harden. That way if you cap it quickly, it's gonna be, you're gonna be able to reheat the tube again and this will liquefy again. The biggest uh, complaint a lot of guys have is the tubes get ruined and they get plugged right here and you can no longer get the, the glue out and that's because it's hardening in here. Um, so make sure you always dispense at least an inch of liquid and then cap it really fast and you should be good to go for the next time you wanna use it. So, one of the most common problems with new tubes is that sometimes you heat them up and you go to start dispensing the liquid with your gun and it's jammed, it's plugged, and you can't get the liquid out. For me, I'll take a drill bit and I'll drill that out and sometimes that will free up that check valve area and allow the glue to exit. Other times I've found the tubes are just junk and I just throw them away. Usually I'm on a job site, time is money, and I don't have time to spend, you know, a half hour messing with a tube like this. I've lost money if I've spent that long on it. So I'm gonna give it a shot with a drill bit, do what I can there, but then if it doesn't break free, I'm just gonna throw it in the trash and move on to another one. Let's talk about the check valve. Since I cut this cartridge in half this morning, you can see this was a partially used cartridge. So I have the steel piece that plunges the glue. I have hardened glue here. I've got glue in the tip of the gun, but in between here, there's actually a rubber piece and it looks like glue, but it's just a round washer that's got an X cut in it and that is the check valve. That's what keeps the glue from just spilling out the end of the tube whenever, um, whenever you heat it up. Now you'll find whenever you're using this product, sometimes this check, check valve malfunctions and you'll get some glue just kind of lightly oozing out the end of the tube. That's just part of it. It's a, there's, there's just nothing you can do about it, but expect that. What's going on there is just the, the cut in this little rubber washer is probably um, not closing up again, which is just allowing the glue to ooze out, but I use enough of it, you know, it's not that, not that big a deal. Um, you'll be done with that cartridge and on to the next one before you know it. 
So not too big a deal there. So now I've had this, uh, this cartridge warming up and my light has now turned to green. That means the unit is telling me that the glue is hot enough for application and I can go ahead and use it. Keep in mind with this product, they say that you should not have it heated up for more than 16 hours. So if you're using this and you're just leaving the gun heated up all the time and using a little bit here or there, and you're exceeding that 16 hours of hot time, then your joints might be compromised and your bond might be compromised from just the, the adhesive staying hot for too long. Another note to keep in mind is the type of wood that you're bonding and how porous it is. This is a structural adhesive and it's quite a bit different than a regular PVA glue. So this actually has the, the ability to fill voids and gaps. And some guys have told me they've had issues when trying to use it with something like maple, which has an extremely um, closed pore property to it. I use it almost exclusively on poplar, which is a little bit softer wood. It's more of an open grain and it's worked really well for me. So keep that in mind. If you're trying to use this, say for like a handrail fitting with maple or some crown molding with maple, you may have issues with it not wanting to bond. I personally have great success uh, with poplar. So now that I've got my green light, the product is heated up and I'm ready to use it. At this point, I'll take it off the cradle, uncap it, and then just give it a test squeeze to see if my cartridge is functioning properly. And as you can see, it is. I've got a nice clear liquid coming out, which tells me it hasn't interacted with air. Sometimes whenever you see it and it's yellowish, uh, that's an old cartridge or it's interacted with the moisture in the air a little bit. Clear is good. You want that nice, hot, clear viscosity, and uh, that's what you want to see. One of the other really common comments I get with the Hyper is guys will ask, well, why not just use CA glue? Why not just, um, you know, CA glue, a lot of guys will say is strong and works for them. Um, so let's talk about the different glues. Typically doing carpentry work, you're gonna have your regular wood glue, CA glue, and Hyper right here. Uh, also talk about glue sticks just a little bit. Regular wood glue requires clamping pressure. That's a big uh, misconception that I see a lot of trim carpenters, a mistake that they make is they think they can just put glue on something and kind of stick it together a little bit and nail it on the wall and it's not really tight, but it's filled with glue. There's no strength in a joint like that. Uh, the specs for wood glue to work most effectively requires a lot of clamping pressure and it requires a very tight joint where you're squeezing out all the excess glue and you have just a micro thin layer of glue between your two pieces of wood and solid contact throughout. So that means for like a mitered casing around a window, this does not have gap filling properties. It needs to be a perfect joint. It needs to be tight the whole way across the joint for it to really achieve strength. You're really only, only gonna achieve that with a well cut joint in a product like clam clamps or, or a Hartford clamp or something like that that's gonna give you a lot of clamping pressure. So keep that in mind. You're not getting maximum strength out of this if you don't have clamping pressure and very good joinery on that joint. So you're making that connection. This is not a gap filling glue. So CA glue. Whenever you think of CA glue, I, people don't realize CA glue does not have tensile strength, meaning it's not gonna, it's gonna, hold a, a small piece together or something, but whenever you apply pressure on that joint, think of it like an ice cube. It's gonna hold until it doesn't, and then it's just gonna crack, just like an ice cube. And that's kind of how CA glue works. Now, the, the thing that kind of throws a wrench in that whole equation with CA glue 
is that a lot of guys in different parts of the country are using MDF uh, for their trim products. And MDF actually does work very well with CA glue. So you gotta keep that in mind. Are you using real wood or are you using MDF? If you're using MDF, there is a pretty good bond strength using CA glue. But for real wood, for an end grain joint, or for miter casing and stuff like that, it might seem strong, but you should go and start kind of pulling on it a little bit and it'll break pretty easily. So CA glue is not ideal for wood. Great for small returns and things like that. I use it for stuff that's not gonna be stressed, but for something that I know is gonna be exposed to high stress, either whenever I'm installing it, nailing it to the wall, or through expansion and contraction, so if I've got a really wide board or something and I know it's gonna be moving, I need something stronger than CA glue because this is not a structural adhesive. So some people who are just really not well-versed at all in their glues will ask, well, what's the difference between hyper PR adhesive and your typical glue sticks? This, this is like not even close to the same league. This is like little league in the big leagues as far as strength. Yes, this will tack up and give you somewhat of an initial strong bond, but as far as real structural strength, glue sticks are not gonna have it. Hyper adhesive is a structural adhesive. So if you use it correctly, it's gonna create really, really strong joints. With hyper, there are some gap filling properties. That's a really big advantage under certain applications. Whereas you might be wanting to use a regular wood glue, but you know you're not gonna have that perfect contact between your two pieces and you might have some gappiness in there, that's where a product like Hyper will work great for you. Um, a lot of other applications it works great too, but keep that in mind, it does have some gap filling properties. So let's talk about achieving maximum joint strength with Hyper Adhesive. You can see here, just a moment ago, I dispensed the glue onto this piece, which was clear. Now it's hard and it is a, a white color. That whenever you see that white color, that's because it has pretty much cured. Outwardly, it's cooled and interacted with the moisture in the air. So now that's cured. Whenever it comes to open time, again, I've only used the 30 second. I've used tons of the 30 second but I can't speak to the 60 and 90 second products. But with open time, you only have a small window of time to get your pieces together and get them situated to achieve maximum joint strength. The moment you, one, touch, dispense that glue onto one surface, but then two, press that other surface up against it, it's interacting and it's going to town doing that cure process. So if you're still moving stuff, you can get what is called a cold joint and your joint strength has been completely compromised. So whenever you use this, you gotta get your stuff together quick and then don't move it. Let it do its thing. But if you, uh, if you put it together and you're still kind of finagling with it, you'll find that you'll get a, a cold bond and your joint strength is lost. There is some technique involved in getting maximum strength out of your glue joints on mitered casing. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is put your clamp clamp on the joint and dry fit it. Give it a quarter turn just to slightly set the pins. Then put your hyper on and you're gonna put it back together and clamp it down. Pre-clamping it gets your pins kind of depressed so that whenever you actually get your glue on there and put it together, it's gonna to automatically align itself. Giving it that first quarter, quarter turn as a dry fit really helps, and it's gonna ensure that you're getting that joint together when the glue's hot and it's gonna set really well. One of the beauties of Hyper is the ease of cleanup for any squeeze out. Much easier to clean out than regular PVA glue. So you're just gonna let that glue uh, kinda you're gonna go from that clear color to that milky color, and that's gonna tell you it's set up just a little bit. Usually it only takes about 10, 15 seconds, and then you can scrape it and it'll just flake right off of the surface of the wood. Really easy to clean up. Here I'm using a cheap plastic scraper that you can get off Amazon. This is the same kind of scraper that would use for dish pans with a Teflon surface. 
Works really great for getting the glue off without damaging the wood. Keep in mind with open time that the smaller bead that you have, the faster it's gonna cure. The larger bead you have, the slower it's gonna cure. So if you're uh, putting some, let's say some mitered one by four window casing together, what I do, I just do one bead across there. And some guys might take the gun and do the little squiggly thing and try and coat the whole one by four. You don't wanna do that because that thin layer, you're thinning that out so that it's gonna cure too fast and it's gonna increase those odds of a cold joint. So do one large bead and then put your pieces together uh, and then keep, just keep that in mind. The larger the bead, the more time you're gonna have. The smaller the bead, the less time you're gonna have. So let's talk about workflow a little bit on the job site. Like I said, you want to avoid having this product just sitting out all day hot with the cap off. Ideally, what I like to do for my mitered casing, I like to cut a lot of uh, windows and doors, number them all, and have, them, have a, a large portion of it cut and ready to go. And then I'll heat up my, hot, my, my glue, and then I'll just assemble a whole bunch at one time. It's not the end of the world. You can plug it in and leave it hot all day, but I just prefer to get a little bit ahead of it. You'll find using this that your best, strongest joints come from a brand new tube that is nice and hot, and it's also gonna have a thinner viscosity whenever it's a new tube. I have noticed that tubes that I heat up and, and let cool and reheat a, a few times tend to develop a thicker viscosity and that can be a little bit less ideal on certain applications. The other thing I use Hyper a lot for is handrail fittings. So again, putting together handrail drops and handrail returns for wall mount handrails, that, that nice thin viscosity is ideal for that. So a nice hot new tube is ideal. Again, try to, try to just adjust my workflow around it so that I'm not just leaving a gun sitting out hot all day and using it every two hours. An important tip whenever you're using uh, Hyper for handrail fittings, something I found that works really well is whenever I'm ready to assemble my fittings, I take my utility knife and I score both sides of the joint with a checker pattern. And what that did, does is it gives the glue, excess glue somewhere to go and that results in a tighter, more hairline joint. And the other thing is, I think it gives it more, the glues more to bite into and actually creates a stronger joint. So for handrail fittings, I really recommend getting out your knife, doing a checker pattern on them before you stick those things together. That's something I do every single fitting and it works really well for me. Couple other notes on workflow. It, it, it's, it's not as crucial to have extreme clamping pressure with Hyper as opposed to regular wood glue. However, the best combo for mitered casing, as you've probably seen in a lot of my videos if you've watched them, is a clam clamp with the Hyper. That is, this clamp is gonna give that miter joint a ton of clamping pressure. It's gonna create a zero glue line, in my opinion, at least with Poplar. Uh, some guys may have different experiences. Poplar is what I work with and it works great for it. So, clam clamps are huge. The other big thing, as I mentioned before, is handrail returns. I use Hyper a lot for handrail returns. Uh, the strength is incredible if you're doing it correctly. I've tested my handrail returns, beat them against concrete, and the wood will often break before the return, the glue joint gives out. So I have no problem standing behind those, those handrail returns just with hyper use. Say like a wall mount handrail, the alternative is you've got to put some kind of joinery in there or else you've got to run some trim through screws through. The way I do my handrail returns, I just use hyper and there's zero exposed fasteners which is gonna make the end product look better. There's no holes for the painter to worry about filling and it's faster than anything else. Problem that I hear about often is with miter casing that is a very small profile or a very thin profile. Just like any glue, 
the less surface area that is available, the less bond you're gonna have. So for a thin mitered casing profile, if it's a two and a half inch profile and it's thin, you're still gonna be able to break that casing because you just don't have much there to work with. As opposed to a three quarter inch thick one by four, which I use fairly often, I have taken those joints and beat them against concrete and the wood will break before the joint does. So Hyper does like more surface area, but you're gonna have the same struggle with any adhesive, same for regular wood glue or CA glue. I typically don't use Hyper on crown molding a whole lot. One is because uh, the only place I'm gonna be using it is for outside corners. And like I said, heating up a tube just for a couple outside corners is not usually ideal. You can use Hyper to create some really, really strong crown joints though, uh, using a couple techniques. One thing I recommend is using a framing square, clamp it down to your bench, and that's going to help you keep your outside corners at 45 degrees. The next thing is use some half inch dowels and glue those onto the back side of the miter, and that's going to give you a ton of extra strength. To recap the product, you want to get any glue that might have potentially reacted with humidity in the air out of the end of the nozzle. So all you're going to do is dispense uh, a solid inch of adhesive and then put your cap on, twist it on nice and tight, and take it off the heat and you're good to go then. Again, I have seen it before mentioned where you can put uh, a, like a petroleum petroleum grease type thing in the end of the cap that'll make it seal even better, but I haven't really done that. I have seen the misconception that you can take the gun off of the cradle for like 15 or 20 minutes and still use it. That's not accurate. You want to keep this cartridge as hot as possible, as much as possible all the time. So whenever I'm using it for mitered casing, I'm putting the glue on and then putting it right back on the cradle for every joint. Occasionally I'll grab it and take it somewhere, put it, put something together, but I don't like it to be off of the cradle for more than a couple minutes. That makes the glue start to lose its heat and it is just not good for the glue. A common question is how is it for stain grade work? It's actually fantastic for stain grade work it's not nearly as messy with, as regular PVA glue, uh, which can cause a lot of issues with staining if you get glue on the wood and don't wipe it off with a wet cloth. That should pretty well cover most of the nuances of this product. I've been asked a ton of questions about this product over the last couple years, and I've been wanting to make a video that would be a one-stop video to kind of address all the different various nuances and questions about using PER products. So. Hope this helps. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and drop me a comment if you've got any questions. Thanks for watching as always, guys.